Today on Guitar Lab, we have an inexpensive DIY sustainer. Hi everybody, welcome back to Guitar Lab. I'm Sean. I hope you're all having a great day. I just wanted to do a video for you about a project that I did on this guitar recently where I made a DIY sustainer for I'm going to say it was probably right around $20. Um, I have a guitar that that uh, is just a parts guitar that I use for experiments and stuff like that that I ran this on. I had an old pickup that from a set that I'd bought from uh, from China that was extremely cheap, but it was effective for this for this project. Um, I bought a, a small amp that you can find on eBay for less than five dollars. Uh, it's a five volt amp, uh, battery supply. Uh, uh, three AAA batteries in a, in a battery pack and I'm going to show you how I did it. This is the heart of this project. Uh, it's the amplifier that I bought. Now it is a stereo amplifier but I only use the right channel on it um, which is really all you need. I, if there was a reason to wire the other channel up I, I couldn't figure it out. Maybe if you did like a, a dual setup or something like that that would be possible but uh, for my purposes I didn't need that. Next up is the battery pack I bought. I was trying to find something as small as I possibly could that would uh, maybe fit in the tremolo cavity. Um, this is too big, unfortunately, to do that. So that, that project guitar that I have has a, a cavity already routed out in the back that I used for a, for a different powered project uh, before. This actually doesn't even fit in that, but I managed to just kind of wiggle it in there and tape it in place. Uh, they came in a three pack for, I think it was $7, something like that. And finally, we have the wire. That's 32 gauge enameled copper wire. Um, it's very important that it's covered because it'll short out whenever you run the, the coil otherwise. And of course, next up is the disassembly that I will spare you the boring details of. There you can see the pickup that I used uh, that has a bar magnet across the bottom with the individual pins. They're probably not magnetized. And I made a little spacer on my 3D printer to, to give it maybe about three millimeters of, you can see one fell off there, to give it about three millimeters of space that I wanted to do about 120 winds on to try and get this as close to eight ohms as I possibly could. And that is my little improvised winding station that I made. I used the a tremolo plate from an old tremolo that I had and, and uh, the magnet stuck to that and I stuck that on my drill and as you can see that didn't work out very well but uh, in, the, in the long run it worked out I, I got it wound up uh, at 120 winds I had 9 ohms that I was not going to fuss about it was close enough um, obviously you want 8 ohms is what your target amount is because you're effectively making a speaker out of this just without the the diaphragm to make any noise you just want it to to vibrate the strings whenever it's there's noise going through it Next up is soldering the ends of the leads, the beginning and the end of the coil that I wound, onto the existing positive and negative terminals. I mean, used the solder that was there, I just heated it up and melted them right on.
Now I'm getting everything ready to install the parts to put it all back together again. Now I'm installing the sustainer driver into the middle pickup section of the pick guard. This amp was perfectly suited for doing this because it had a little um, knob on it that would uh, fit right into a tone control hole. So it was absolutely perfect and I just stumbled upon it on Amazon and I was like, hey, that I could use that for a sustainer project. Here you can see how I wired this up. Um, for I only use the right channel, so on R out, positive and minus, both of those go to the positive and minus on the sustainer driver that I made. Uh, power plus and minus obviously goes to the, the battery pack that I made. Um, that is a uh, five volt power pack that I made. Um, well, four and a half, technically. Uh, uh, three AAA batteries. Uh, then the input on the ground, and I know that says B there, but on the actual uh, unit that I got it said R because that's the right channel. Must have been a misprint on the, the one that were the one they took the picture. Uh, those just go straight to the, the lugs on the, either the volume control or you can tap them right into the, the two, the positive and negative that are going to the input jack on the guitar. Uh, could, because you take the, the main line right out of that and you're sending that to the uh, sustainer driver. That's how the circuit works. But pretty easy circuit, honestly. Uh, not much to it. And here I'm making my last couple of solder connections that I needed to make. I used quick connects for most of these just to make it easier. Because I changed the configuration on this poor guitar 5,000 times. Actually, this might be its last stint as an electric guitar. I've been thinking about doing a DIY uh, Strat acoustic, and this would be the donor guitar. And I would have to route it out so much that uh, that would be its last incarnation. This is the sound with it engaged. <laughs> You hear it kind of has that weird rounded flangey sound in the background that you get that when you turn the amp up very high on this, but it works. So the funny thing is it feeds back on some notes, but it doesn't on others. I noticed on E it feeds back really well. And I have it turned up. Uh, this control is actually the amp control. And the, this particular amp comes with a little off switch on it too. So like you can actually disengage it for just a, uh, you know, the regular sound without the sustainer engaged. And of course, if you turn it up too high, it will start to feedback. So what I've been doing is dialing it up just until it feedbacks and then back it off to right uh, just a wee little bit. You can hear what I'm talking about, about that weird sound that starts to make. Certainly not something that I would use in an actual stage setting or anything like that, but definitely something worth playing around with if you're uh, at all interested. Well, that is it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if anybody had, wants to try to do that and they have any questions, uh, you can feel free to, to shoot me a message and I'd be happy to try and help you out. Um, it is really easy. I, I, I think I left enough detail there. You'd be able to, to track down what I was doing. Um, and that is about all I have for you. I will put links to every all of those products in the video description below uh, so that you can uh, follow along with what I did if you want to try and do that yourself. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed that and see you next time. Take care.